Hello, beautiful Harvest Fields International family. It's so good to be with you again through this live stream from Holland. It's uh, on Sunday afternoon here in Holland. And um, me and Tamara, we are so excited to, uh, to open this meeting because we know what is coming next. And uh, I hope you are uh, full of expectation what the Lord will say to you today in this live stream about 2021. Because we started a new year. And we wish you a very, very happy new year from Holland to India, to Russia, to the United States, people in Holland, wherever you're watching from, from the UK. We have so many places where people are connected to us through this live stream. And we are so excited about this new year because we know that the Lord is up to something, something big. And we are part of that. And you are part of that because we are the church together. We are the ecclesia. We've been preaching about that last year a lot. And we expect that the Lord will move through this new body of Christ all over the world. Like this expanded um, church. And not only in the building, but we left the building. And we are in your home now. And that's where the Lord is. Because where two or three are together, the Lord is there. Jesus is there. So, yeah, I just... Want to, um, yeah. Want to ask you to uh, really um, set your heart towards heaven and to open up your heart for what the Lord is doing. And let's just uh, uh, expect that the Lord is doing something. Also, people who are joining us through Zoom are the people coming in. We we just uh, we have a, the opportunity to see if people are still coming into the meeting. And um, so if you want to be part of that, if you're watching through YouTube or Facebook and you want to be part of our Zoom ministry time, please uh, click on the link. We will post it on, uh, uh, under the video. And um, if you just join us, we will let you in. And after um, the preaching, uh, we, will, um, we will pray over you. And we, we just believe that the Lord is doing something in your life personal. We've seen so many uh, beautiful things happening just touching a screen and praying over people's lives. The power of the Lord hits people. That's how the Lord works. And uh, today we have um, like for 45 minutes of people from all over the world. Leaders, prophets, apostles. People who know the Lord and walking with them in ministry. And all those people, um, we, we just ask them like, what is on your heart? What is the Lord speaking to you over 2021? And we like Bill Johnson, Mel Tari, we have Stacey Campbell, we have Cindy Jacobs, all those people in a, a video message and we will show it to you because we are thrilled. Because what we've heard, this is a powerful message. So stay tuned and let's just start with prayer and expect the Lord to do something in your life. We are really happy to have Hans with us for worship. So, and after worship, Matthias will be on stage and he will just introduce uh, what the Lord is going to uh, speak through these people. And yeah, let's just be full of expectation. Tamara, do you want to pray? I would love to. Thank you, Father, for this new year. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your kindness. Yes, Lord. And I was thinking about that you uh, will give us a new year with hope, with new hope. And I don't know what your situation is, and I don't know what you're feeling right now. Um, but I know one thing, God is good. And he's a life giver. He's a hope bringer. And I hope and I pray that you will feel that today from top to toe. That you will feel that you are loved. That this is a new year with new chances. With new uh, opportunities. And with a new level of uh, relationship with the Father and with Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that you will bring this today to the prophetic words. New hope. I declare new hope in Jesus' name and new life. I was constantly thinking about new life, new life. God will bring new life. Please join us, share us what your heart is, what you're feeling during uh, the service. And uh, we will wish you a very, very, very great year. Yes. Jesus' name. Amen. Just let us know where you're watching from. Uh, write it in the comments. And uh, if you want to join us on Zoom again, find us, find the link and join us because we would love to pray over you. So, uh, yes, let's have a great time of worship.
stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the chase, this one thing remains. One thing remains. You are higher.
I was singing this song, I, I really felt and I, I actually could see the stream of God's love just coming into your house, just going into your house and into your lives and into your hearts. And His love never fails. And as we are singing these songs, it, it is about this. It is about that God's love is never failing. It is never, ever stopping. He is never stopping to love you. He will always continue. Whatever you've done in the past, whatever you will do in the future, He will never stop loving you. His love never fails. His ne love never fails. The Father, we want to thank you for this. We want to thank you for the love that never fails, and, and we want to kneel before your throne today. Surrendering all to you. Jesus. Here I am, down on my knees again, surrendering all. Surrendering.
my hope, all of my strength, and all my delight is in you, Lord, forevermore. There is no one else for me, none but Jesus. Crucify to set me free. Now I live to bring him praise. There is no one else for me. None but Jesus. Crucify to set me Yes, we give you praise, Lord. Yes, we give you praise, Lord. No one else like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's so good to worship you, Jesus. Because through you we worship the Father. We worship in the Spirit. In Spirit and through, Lord. So this is... a. Um, a moment of intimacy. With the Father, the Spirit and the Son. A dance of the bridegroom and the bride, Lord. We just want to be in that intimate moment with you. Every moment of our life. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Hans. It's so amazing. I've seen people commenting like hey Hans from India they all recognize you like wow people from India who know you like they're watching now so it's so amazing to have this international family and and contacts and uh, people we know all over the world that's amazing we love to be part of the family and I hope you are um, you're happy too to be with us and you are um, full of expectation to uh, to see what the Lord has for you, for us, in 2021. And in a minute, Matthias will come on stage and will introduce uh, his friends from all over the world, his friends in ministry. So amazing that just with one text, we, um, we find people, leaders from all over the world, well-known, respected leaders, who take the time to, uh, to um, come with a message for you. Because they all know that you are watching from, from all over the world and uh, they would love to invest in your life. And um, it's so great to, uh, to be together here for this moment. And uh, if you are willing to, um, yeah, to be part of our ministry, there's a, an opportunity to, uh, to sow into our ministry through a donation. And uh, we are very happy last year with Christmas, we asked for a special Christmas donation. And, uh, and a lot of you responded, and we are so happy to, um, yeah, to, to, to see that people are willing to give because we know that what we get and what we receive, we, uh, we give it back to the Lord, and we just invest it in our ministry. And uh, yeah, we would love to be able to have our own studio and our own equipment and more and more be professional in what we do to reach out to you, like to have a whole screen where we can just see the people on Zoom and, uh, and pray over them. And uh, so if you are able and willing uh, to give the Lord uh, an offering, uh, please use this, the, um, the information on the screen, donate at gospelmusicfestival.nl through PayPal or um, use our bank account number to, to give. And um, 
if you want to join us through Zoom, you find in the description of the video on Facebook and on YouTube, and even in the comments on Facebook, you find the Zoom link. So please join us because like in 50 minutes or so, we will have ministry time and we take time to pray over you. Um, but I just leave you now for a moment to, uh, to make your donation. And after that, I will invite Matthias on stage. So Matthias, if you want to come on stage, we'd love to pray for you. Thank you. Lord, I thank you for, uh, for this moment. We stay in your presence, Lord, because you are here, you're with us. That's right. And uh, I just thank you for what, um, what you work on our hearts, Lord. You're so willing to work with us, to cooperate with us, to use us to bring in the harvest, Lord. And you have a plan for us. That's an amazing plan. And I want to thank you for leaders all over the world. I want to thank you for Matthias, who was in covenant relationship with people from all over the world, with leaders. Lord, this is a, an amazing uh, network, Lord, that will bring in the harvest. And we feel so connected with them. And I uh, thank you for Matthias, for his family. I bless him, Lord, as he uh, just... Um, yeah, it takes this moment to, to also release something from your heart, Lord. And um, for this year, we thank you, Lord, that a new year just started. And we are full of expectation what you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, it's so good to be with you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I, I do believe that the coming uh, um, minutes, probably it'll take 50 minutes, uh, could be really life-changing for you. We, we ask our friends, uh, Bill Johnson, but also Paul Manwaring and uh, Mel Tari, uh, David Wagner, Ben Fitzgerald, Cindy Jacobs, Ken Gott, um, Ian Ross, Stacey Campbell, uh, Leif Hedlund, and very important, also Vladimir uh, from Russia, uh, to really speak into your life. And they got two to three minutes uh, to really share what they believe the Lord has spoken to them, what has to do with destinations, what has to do with purpose, what has to do with focus on what God wants to do all over the world. And I also have a, a great word of the Lord and I will take a five to ten minutes. Praise God, I have the longest time to release a prophetic word for you. Five to ten minutes, hallelujah. And the rest two to three minutes so we all can uh, fit everyone in. Our mission is hope in every person, a voice in every home, a testimony in every city, and a cry in every nation. And we do believe what God is doing right now, the shaking, what's going on. Uh, I do believe that uh, many people were almost relieved to enter into 2021 and to leave all the dust and all the, the things from the, the year of 2020 behind them. But the fact is, is that it could be, even though we are living in 2021, that the epic atmosphere the circumstances we are in right now is not changed maybe the year is changed in numbers but maybe your situation is not changed yet but I have really do believe I have a prophetic word it's almost like like a, a bullet into the into the uh, the enemy's camp what I do believe has to do with four things what the Lord wants to do right now in 2021 in your life and that's really repositioning yourself so you can write it somewhere down. Everything what happened the last few months, actually the whole year 2020, has to do with positioning yourself. And uh, while I was praying for this prophetic word the Lord is uh, releasing right now, is um, 2 Timothy 4, verse 7 to 8. And maybe uh, our friends behind the uh, technical uh, computers, they can um, show a, a little picture what the Lord showed me clearly for this uh, 8 to 9 minutes. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7 to 8 says, I have fought the good fight. I do believe that we are living in the war. Jesus said, I sent you into the world among wolves. And, and Jesus didn't say it to discourage us, uh, but he said, I equip you fully. 
<laughs> I equip you fully to fight the good fight. I have finished the race Paul is writing to Timothy and I have kept the faith. So these three things, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race and I have kept my faith. And I do believe that the Lord right now is pouring out his Holy Spirit on this scripture. That we are learning to fight the good fight. That we are finishing the race God has for us in life. And that you're keeping the faith in the circumstances the world is in right now. I, I do believe that, I don't know if you can see the picture. Yeah, there it is. And, and this is actually a very prophetic picture. So as you can see here uh, in the picture, is you see a four-point stance. Very important. So as you can see in the picture, that these people who are runners, and remember Paul is writing to Timothy, I called you to run the race and finish well. And you and me, we all have a race to win. And what's very prophetic is that these this people, they are trained to win a race, to run very fast. But they, their starting point is from a standstill point. And I do believe that during the crisis two th we, are, uh, we went through in 2020, many people had the feeling of standing still. That's literally what we heard all around the world. When a lot of flights stopped flying, when a lot of conferences and crusades and campaigns were cancelled, where many people in the nations couldn't go to church on Sunday, it felt for many people that the world is standing still. Maybe you're, you're feeling even spiritually you're standing still. And that's the reason the Lord is starting today, speaking to you, repositioning yourself for what I am going to do. And how do you reposition yourself? The Lord gave me four things. So as you see, they're using two hands and two feet. And from this position, what you see here on your screen from this picture, from the standstill position, they had an extreme acceleration forward. Remember the prophetic word in 2019 was extreme acceleration. And I do believe that the Lord brought us in this position, what you see behind me. That the Lord wants to say there are four things, four things I want to do today, the four point stance. What makes you run very fast in this year from a standstill position. So this is a really prophetic word. And next week in my preaching, actually I'm going to take time, 30 to 40 minutes to explain more the four stance positions. So I'm going to mention right now, the first one is the promises of the Lord. Very important. It's almost like your right hand. Stand on the promises of the Lord. And next week, again, I'm going to share more prophetic words uh, and, and more promises of the Lord, what he wants to do. But the first one is the promises of the Lord. Remind yourself what God is saying over your life. Remember Jeremiah 29 verse 11 where God says, I have a, a fruitful and hopeful future for you. To prosper. The only thing God can think about you is good. Okay, so this is one of the four stand positions is the word of the Lord, the promises of the Lord. The second one is very important, is hope. I, I, there is something with this word hope. Because we are living and probably you are placed in a hopeless world. Like a lot of people around us, they are circling around in chaos without hope. And that's the reason God sent his son Jesus, who is the hope of glory. And the hope of glory is living inside of you. Everything what God wants to do today is give hope to the nations. And he wants to do it through you. Can I hear an amen? It's very important. We really believe this. Hope is so important. Because there's so much hopelessness around us. And hopelessness is based on a lie. Hope is based on the goodness of God. Hopelessness is based on a lie. People who don't have hope, they're dealing with depression. And when you're dealing with depression, your vision is blurred and you lose perspective. That's the reason that's so important. We hear this message to start well in 2021. We need to be people of hope. And when you have hope, you have perspective. And you start to realize that you are the one who's going to give hope into the situation God has placed you. Because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the hope of glory, is living inside of you. And the third one is very important, is faith. Faith. Hebrews 11 is telling us that faith is, is, is the fundament. 
it's a very strong foundation of the things we don't see yet. And then we read in Hebrews 11 verse 7 that God, and I'm, actually it's, it's better we're going to read this because this is so incredible, powerful, what the Lord is saying about faith. It says in Hebrews 11 verse 7 from the Passion Translation, faith opened Noah's heart to receive revelation and warnings from God about what was coming. Even things that had never been seen. And he stepped out in reverent obedience to God. He built an ark that would save him and his family. Very important what we read here. So faith, and I do believe this is the, this is the third position the Lord wants to give to you. He wants to restore faith in your heart. Faith uh, makes, the, makes you possible to receive a revelation from the Lord. Even warnings. This is very important because many people around the globe, uh, they receive warnings from the Lord. But I do say to you, if the Lord gives you a warning for what's going to happen, He always gives the solution. And many times I miss that in prophetic words. There is a warning, but if there's a warning without a, a provision or solution, I always say go back to the Lord and ask for that solution before you start communicating the warning. It's very important because God warned Noah there is something going to happen that has to do with the disaster because the people are not listening. So faith opened the eyes of Noah's heart. He received a revelation, but he also received a provision. God said, build an ark. And what did Noah do? <laughs> he was obedient. It looked foolish in the eyes of the world, but that obedience, that faith saved his whole family. This is very important that faith can save your life. Faith is able to save your family. So faith is very important. And faith is opening your spiritual eyes. And the Lord wants to give probably warnings and revelation for what's going on in the world. But the wonderful thing about faith is he always gives also for you a solution. Amen? So this faith is so important. And we, we talked about hope. The Lord is one is really restoring hope in your life. Hope is a person. His name is Jesus Christ. It's not your feeling, not your circumstances. It's Jesus and the promises of the Lord. And the last position of this four stand position of the runner from a standstill position, moving very fast forward to run the race is very important. It's the word love. If you look into the world right now, we see a planet full of spiritually orphans. And one of the things God wants to restore is his father heart to the people. So important. The Lord didn't uh, leave us as orphans. It says in Romans that, that he, he poured out the spirit of God. And because of the spirit of God, we, we know we are sons and daughters. And next week I give you some incredible revelation that actually Adam was called a son of God. It's very important to know this, that in this, on this planet earth, we were created in love. When you go back to Genesis, God spoke and something came from nothing into existence, except with humankind. Except with humans. God said, it's so important. I'm going to create this beautiful garden because I want family. That's the reason he gave a son. That's he, he, the reason he gave stars. That's the reason he gave animals. But when it came to his creation, the crown of his creation, listen, you have to hear this. God came down from heaven to earth. We, didn't, we were not created by a spoken word. We were created by the master himself. He left his home in heaven to create a home here on earth called Garden of Eden. It was the perfect condition for his family to grow up. And he said, I want to have family. I want to create something what looked like us. Sometimes we make from God something so, uh, so far away. But it could be, uh, maybe I say something dangerous, but it could be that we look like God. If I look to my children, I look to my son, then I see something of my DNA even how they look like of my children. So when we are created as God's children, it could be that our Abba Father looks like you and me. It's just a thing. God is very clear about this. Because he took, he took earth and he created, and he created every detail with his hands. He breathed it on Adam. With other words, there was a face-to-face -face encounter with his son. 
It's literally saying in Luke 3, and again next week I'm going to share more about that, that Adam is called son of God. It's mind-blowing what's actually in the word. And the first thing Adam saw was the face of God, his daddy. The first thing Adam saw were the emotions of daddy God, the presence of the Lord. He, he, he felt father. And then Eve was created, not out of mud, but out of a rib. Good God personally as a father took the rib of Adam in a deep sleep and created Eve. And the most beautiful story is that, that, that God brought Eve as a father to Adam personally. Because God is all about family. He's all about intimacy, about connection, about love. That's the reason in, in that garden what God created for human mankind. He was walking every night with Adam and Eve. And I do believe God wants to restore that relationship. And he did it through his son Jesus Christ. You and me are able to walk every day with daddy God. And I do believe that because of what, what we see in the world, that the master one who released the orphan spirit over this earth is Satan himself. He, he was the biggest orphan. And he created this, this nasty release, what separated the children from God. We live in a planet full of spiritually orphans. That's the reason we, we see people blowing themselves up. That's the reason we see the killings. We see the murders. We see the racism. We see so much stuff in the world. And the root, the really deep root, is because they are baptized with that orphan spirit. And we as church, you and me, we are created on this earth as sons and daughters to release the spirit of adoption over this planet earth. And that's what the Lord wants to restore in 2021. A baptism of the sons and daughters realizing that they are created by God. I do believe millions of Christians who fell asleep are starting to be awake and starting to realize who they are. Love. Perfect love. Perfect love. That we start to realize that we are made in perfect love. And maybe you have a father. Maybe you have a mother who never said I love you. Maybe you, you know people that they feel like they're not belonging. Well, I have good news. We as body of Christ, we can say, but you have a heavenly father who loves you so much. That he gave his son Jesus Christ to this earth. Every person on planet earth needs to hear that they belong to a family. And the family is the family of God. And how it was in the Garden of Eden. That's how God wants planet earth to get saved. Perfect peace. No chaos. No shame. That's the reason they could walk naked. Because there was no shame. No fear. The four positions are love. Hope. Faith and standing on the promises of the Lord. And if we start like this in 2021, I promise you from a very maybe difficult situation in your life. Maybe for a feeling I'm standing still for so long. I promise you if you, if you start like that, hope, faith, love and the promises of the Lord. You will experience an extreme acceleration moving forward. And seeing the promises of the Lord being fulfilled. And my last word is for those who are afraid. Who are afraid of the, the tribulation. Who are afraid of uh, all the things are going on in the world. I want to say to you. Listen. Romans 8 says you don't have a spirit of fear anymore to fear. You have the spirit of the Lord. What is your perspective? And the perspective of the Lord is, is that he is the one. Who is the Alpha and the Omega. With God everything is possible. And, and there is another scripture in the Bible. And I really want to close with that. Because I'm going already over time. It's always very uh, dangerous to give me the microphone. <laughs> because I really have so much things to share with you. Um, but it's and probably... Next week we're going deeper into that. But there is this incredible scripture in Revelation. What says that God gave orders to an angel with the key of hell to bound the devil for a thousand years. You have to hear this. It's in Revelation. 
Revelation says that God gave the authority to an angel. Well, the, the Bible says that God created us higher than the angel. That's the reason Jesus said, if you trust me, you will do even greater things than I did on this earth. You will step until Satan. With other words, what I do believe is that if an angel is able with a key to bound the devil for a thousand years, we don't have to be afraid. Yes, there will be tribulation. Yes, it could be there will be persecution. But listen, with, with, with the war we are in, there's the breakthrough. I always say, how big is the darkness, how big is the light? There will be no gray area anymore. But God says, but I give you the keys of the kingdom. With other words, you have the keys of the kingdom. So if we're going into this fight, we're going this fight, we're going to win this fight with hope. With the perspective of that God has everything in his hand. And the devil is never able, never able to destroy the plans of God. The devil is never able to destroy the plans of God on planet earth. It's just not possible because Jesus died and is the resurrected God. Amen. His blood did everything, broke the curse. And yes, there will be the big day when Jesus is coming back. But before that day, there will be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on planet Earth we've never seen before. I do believe you're entering into a season where you're going to see millions and millions of people getting saved. From government to the most poor people, wherever they are, this is the time of harvest in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So we're going right now also to watch some other great friends of ours uh, they have a prophetic word for you. And please share this link. Let people know what the Lord is saying for 2021. Because this is how we position ourselves in Jesus' mighty name. See you after all these other great apostles and prophets. Hello, Matthias and all of you. Bless you so much. I have just one, one simple, simple word for you for this new year. And that is, let's do everything we can to maintain hope, period. Jesus has a great promise for every problem. He's already covered it all. So that's a good reason to be filled with hope. Bless you guys. Love you much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone, at Harvest Fields International Service. A privilege to be part of your conference I'm so delighted to bring forward a few thoughts regarding 2021. Well, the beginning of this brief message is to encourage you to not look for great sensationalistic prophecies regarding coronavirus, political matters, and the economy. That's the wrong place to look for prophetic words from God. Because the Lord will lead us into 2021 by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are one holy nation as the body of Christ. But the Lord will speak prophetically into our lives. And it will be to train and develop us for the great end time harvest of souls. The church is in the process of great reformation as an institutional model, the institutional model, the introverted model is being dismantled and superseded by an apostolic model to reach every sector of society. That is where you will find the Lord working in 2021, in your life, in your fellowship's life, in your regional and national church's life. But the Lord is calling the church across the world to be first and foremost people who hear the voice of God and then obey. The internet's not the place to put up what God is saying to you. It's about letting the word of the Lord test you, be proven as accurate, then worked out in your day-by-day -day life. Sensationalistic prophecies 
have failed the body of Christ miserably in 2020 because they have proven to be wholly inaccurate. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of another they will not follow. My brothers and sisters, as you gather together, listen to a certain sound in 2021, the sound of Jesus, that we may be shaped and formed into the likeness of Christ, then go forward and dispense that truth as we've been instructed to. Exciting times ahead. The Great Commission was not put on hold through COVID-19. The Great Commission was released further into the nations during lockdown and all the events of 2020. I look forward to seeing some of you on the highways and the byways. Happy New Year and the Lord bless you and all your wonderful family. Hello everyone, this is Leif Hetlin with Global Mission Awareness and Happy New Year to all of my friends and my spiritual family. I am so excited just to be able to share with you for a few moments what I believe God is setting us up for such a time as this. I know that many of us, we're still just kind of coming out of a year of a lot of shaking and I don't know about you, but it looks like everything in our life that can be shook is being shaken. But the whole purpose of the shaking is that the things in our life that is unshakable is going to stand. And I've been asking the Lord in the last couple of years to give me a verse for that year. And last year in 2020, he showed me very clearly, he said, John 2020 for 2020. And some degree when I had COVID-19 through some of my circumstances with a shoulder surgery, I went through so many different hits and in a degree I forgot about the very word of God. And it's so important for us to see it so that we can say it, so that we can then cease it. See it, say it, cease it. But the scripture in John 20, 20 is first of all, Jesus just came over the disciples who had been overwhelmed and he was overwhelming them with his presence and his peace. And then he showed them his hands and his side. What he said to the disciple, everything you're going to go through. And I believe this was a word for 2020 for us. So if you're making a list of all the crisis, every situation, look at his hands and his side. And he says, I took care of that. I provided for that. But now as we're moving into 2021, again, I felt go and look at John 2021. And again, they got a new round of peace. And the disciple, they saw, wow, Jesus is right in the middle of the storm. Jesus is right in the middle of our circumstances. And the Bible says they became glad. They suddenly got a new peace, a new passion out of the crisis they had just been through. And then they were moving into one step more. And I felt this was so much oil on it. He said, now as the father sent me, I also send you. And what God is about to do, unshakable sons and daughters of glory, he's going to take and he's going to send us into this world. The world has become a worldwide orphanage and the orphan spirit is crying out and is actually looking for a father. It's looking for a home. It's looking for security. It's actually looking for peace. And then now he's going to utilize just ordinary people like you and I to be able to bring them back again to the father, back again to family, where they will find a place at the family table. So it is harvest time, my dear friends, and he's looking for harvesters. So as the Father sent Jesus, he's now going to send us with the same Holy Spirit, with the same hope, with the same healing that is going to bring transformation. But don't move into 2021 until you receive his presence, his peace, and his provision so that you have his passion. And when you have his passion, his joy back again, at that moment is the invitation for you. First, allow the alignment to come in. Then the assignment as the Father sent Jesus, he's going to send you. So Father, even at this very moment, I just release, I just release. Just come and just fill us up with your presence. Your presence changes everything. We receive your peace, Jesus. 
And then we stop for a moment and we receive your provision. We thank you, Jesus, that you are a healer. You are a provider. You are a strength. You are a sufficiency. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to show us how the Father is like. And I thank you for the new passion, the new joy, knowing that we are not alone, that you are here with us, Jesus. Every step of the way, we're going to walk with you. But I thank you for the purpose, 2021, as the Father sent Jesus, that you're going to send us. And we get to represent the same Father, full of the same love of the Father and full of the Holy Spirit. So I just bless you to be you, to be a send out one in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. See you soon. Hi, Stacey Campbell here of Shiloh Global. And I want to speak to you what the Lord has been telling me for this new era. The time of the new is here. And the biggest danger for the church is to fall into the fear of the world. We must get deeper in God, deeper into his word, because we are a people who are fearless. And if we move into fear, we will lose sight of what God himself is doing in this time of the new. And we need to seize the hour to make disciples of people and nations. God gave me a scripture for this time. And it's from Ecclesiastes chapter three. For everything, there is a time and for everything, a season under heaven. And specifically verse eight, he began to speak to me about there's a time for war and a time for peace. And we are moving globally into a time where the church needs to take up the posture of war, where we're advancing the kingdom and not shrinking back with fear. That God has given us armor in the New Testament. And even after we're fully clothed in the armor, we have, having done all, we stand in faith in the promises of God and what he is saying and doing in this hour. I believe that the great shift will be moving from Sunday morning church as a location-based event to the release of millions of ecclesias, the original plan for the church, two or three gathered in his name, making disciples of businesses, making disciples of apartment buildings, neighborhoods, where we're gathering in homes and, and, and opening the word of God. It's a new paradigm for the church. Also, God is releasing the power to create wealth like never before. He's looking for Joseph's and Daniel's. Some of you are even listening, and God's been giving you ideas, not just to create wealth to consume on yourself, but like Joseph, to actually create wealth to save nations, to save cities, to save people groups. God's giving that power at this time, and that power is being released for the Monday to Friday move of God that is now upon us. The new wineskin is here. Now, we might hear of wars and rumors of wars. There's great bumpiness coming in this new era. However, the people that know their God will be strong, do exploits, disciple nations, create wealth, and be the solution and the light of the world for this time. And I also want to say that God's speaking a lot about the power to create wealth. There's new... Uh, shifts in global economics, new currencies are being traded globally. It is the end of a selfish hour of people spending on themselves to give away, to be blessed, to be a blessing. And it's being released, this power to create wealth to those who will use it to disciple nations. So if you want to hear more about these programs, download my free Shiloh Global app. There's going to be about the, there's going to be dozens of programs on what the spirit is saying to the church and also how to uh, move into Monday to Friday with the advancing of the kingdom of God. Hello, Mass and family of God, brothers and sisters in the Lord. I just want to share with you just a little bit of um, what we've been hearing from different prophets that we are gathered together with. Uh, we have a theme this year, something the Holy Spirit has spoken to us. It's Ephesians 6.13. And we are taking the last part of that scripture where it says, Having done all, therefore stand. And so this year, the Lord is saying, I'm going to give new strength. I'm going to give strength like you have never had. I'm going to give courage like you have never had. The Lord shows us that the body of Christ around the world are going to be taking a stand for the scripture, taking a stand 
uh, against the evil one, against the things that Satan has done, against your family, and against your life, and that you're going to be victorious. And we also are looking back at all the prophecies that we have given, this group that we have met 20 years, uh, for 20 years, and words like, like God is resetting our life, words like there is a convergence going on uh, of all the promises of God, that the Lord is going to just give us the ability to be strong and strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And that we're going to have turnarounds. There's things that you are going through now that you're going to have a suddenly turnaround. The suddenlies are going to come. Something that you thought could never happen, the Lord, and just in a moment, in the blink of an eye, the Lord is going to change that. You're going to be amazed at how he changes this. It'll be like from one moment to the next. And so, you know, I just feel like the Lord is saying your suddenlies are coming your moment of victory is coming. If you will stand and if you will not faint and if you will just be resolute that God's word is true, you're going to see a great victory. God bless you. Love you all. Well, hello. My name is Ken Gott and I'm speaking from the city of Sunderland here in the United Kingdom. Being asked by Matthias just to share for a couple of minutes, just some thoughts in relation to um the coming year and what my expectations will be what i feel the holy spirit is going to emphasize as we move into a, a fresh new year i want to just read this verse of scripture to you from matthew 6 33 it says but seek first the kingdom of god this is the words of jesus and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you do you know that the word kingdom is mentioned in the New Testament 393 times and the word church only in two verses of Matthew's gospel in um, the four gospels. And so we have a real uh, big emphasis on the kingdom of God. Jesus taught the kingdom of God. His parables were all about the kingdom of God. The year 2020 has been a crazy year, hasn't it? It's going to go down in history as the year of the pandemic, of course. But it has, it has pushed the church. It has squeezed the church. Uh, no longer can we operate at this moment in time anyway in relation to our programs within church buildings. Uh, we can't meet as regular as we would like to. Uh, some of our Sunday morning uh, meetings have been totally cancelled. That, that's certainly the case here in the United Kingdom. But it, it has caused us to re-examine what we are really doing as the body of Christ and what the Lord really wants us to do. So instead of church growth, instead of filling arenas, instead of filling even stadiums, we're going to continue to do that. Of course we are. Maybe we need to take a closer look at really what the Holy Spirit is saying to us and saying to the church in general. I believe that what he really wants us to look at and experience is actually his kingdom, the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus said, when you pray, pray this, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Of course, we can pray that Christ's kingdom will come in all of its fullness when Jesus returns a second time. That's going to happen, absolutely. But between now and that time, I believe that the kingdom of God is within reach, that we can touch it, that we can experience it. And there is an invite from the Lord that we co-labor with him to establish his kingdom here on earth even before his return now as i said earlier we will not see it in its fullness but we can see it in part we can certainly be used by god to influence those spheres of society that the lord has placed us in in matthew 4 17 it says from that time 
Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Romans 14, 17 says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. As we seek the kingdom of God, let's not just seek it for ourselves. Remember, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God, but let's not be selfish in this and seek it only for ourselves, but seek to establish it. Seek to expand it in whatever sphere of society God has placed us in, that we might actually see the fulfillment of that which Christ said in Luke 16, 16. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is being preached and everyone is pressing into it. Everyone is pressing into it. In Luke 10, 9, this will be my last scripture. It says, Jesus' instruction to his disciples, he said this, heal the sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. It is within our reach, within our grasp. 2021, I believe, is going to be a year of kingdom expansion. Yes, we will see the church grow. Yes, we will see the arenas filled again and the stadiums filled again. But I believe it will be a year of kingdom expansion. I just want to bless you with that. And say, may the Lord just put his hand upon you, give you the revelation, give you the anointing, give you what's necessary to be an ambassador of the kingdom, whereby you can bring his reign, rule and authority here on earth for his glory. Amen. Amen. Здравствуйте. Дорогой Матео, дорогие друзья, привет вам большой из России, из Сибири, большая любовь. И верю, что мы живем в благословенное время. Слава Богу за этот год, который прошел 2020, и на самом деле он был очень интересный и необычный. Никто не ожидал, что все так будет происходить. Everything would be happening like this. But we moved into 2021. 2021, I feel like it will be a unique year. It was revealed to me that this is a year of transition. Иисуса Навина, третья глава, пятый стих, говорится, что Иисус Навин говорит народу: "Осветитесь". Consecrate yourselves, because tomorrow the Lord will do marvelous things among you. 2020 has given us a challenge, a challenge that we should meet and move into 2021. You know what's interesting? It's interesting that I saw a picture in which the people of Israel, when they crossed the Jordan, they entered the promised land. They've been living in the desert. They've been walking in the desert. And all this generation, it grew up in the desert, ate manna. They've already had a familiar sight. And then they enter a new phase. They enter the promised land. And in the promised land, there is no manna. There is no familiar sight that they saw in the desert. If manna fell from heaven before, then in the promised land they had to eat of their fruits. And now the usual things that used to work in the desert, they stopped working in the promised land. But God's people had to go to the promised land. And so the next year, which is 2021, I feel that it will be a transition. A transition from something old to something new. That transition from the way of thinking of all things, which may be familiar to us, because 2020 showed us a different picture of the transition to new. And therefore, my wish is that we consecrate ourselves and that we really expect the miracles that God will do in 2021.
Поэтому это год божественного перехода. Церковь поменяется, народы поменяются, страны поменяются. Потому что 2020 год остался бесследным. Он что-то именно в образе жизни и в образе всего человечества. И поэтому мы, как церковь, Получить We must receive the challenge года. of this transition. But I also see a great harvest that is coming into our lives больше больше more and more today. A great harvest of souls. So get ready and may the Lord bless each of us. Hey, all my good friends in the Netherlands, Happy New Year! It's 2021. God is on the throne. He's on the move. So good to be with you this morning. Uh, my heart is full for what God wants to do in your beautiful nation and the place of my roots, the great fatherland of the Netherlands. I believe we're on the verge of a global revival in the same way as we saw a global pandemic in 2020. We're about to see a global revival begin to be birthed in the, in the nations of Europe in the heart of the Netherlands. And I just felt like right now that the hand of the Lord was coming, like directing an orchestra. And I believe that there's about to be a great symphony uh, uh, and a great sound of revival that's about to be birthed in the year ahead, right there at House of Heroes and Harvest International, that the Lord is awakening the nation and the nations of the earth. I woke up this morning and it was like the Lord took me into an open vision and everywhere I looked, There were clocks and there were alarm uh, bells going off. And it wasn't like an alarm of danger. It was an alarm of awakening. And I just felt like the Lord said this morning that morning has broken and the darkness is disappearing. And I just felt like the Lord was turning the lights on of the church. That this is a season where God is going to turn what used to be museums into movements. Oh, I believe there's a fresh reformation and the reformers fire is about to be released throughout uh, the Netherlands and throughout all of Europe in the days that are ahead. And I just kept hearing, it's like I kept seeing a racetrack like in the Olympics and everybody was on their mark. They were getting set and they were waiting for uh, that, that, that shot to be fired, that, that command to be given to go. And I felt like the Lord said that the Lord is putting, uh, putting us in that place called go. And, and the place of limitations is coming off. And the Lord is about to bring us into the place that is above and beyond everything we ever expected or known or seen. There is a sound of revival that is getting ready to be birthed in the Netherlands that I believe is going to be that sound that goes ahead of the move of God. Get ready for that. The church is going to release it. It's not just going to be on a platform uh, with, with praise and worship, as great as that is. But it's going to be that worship out of our hearts. It's going to be the sound of God coming out of our houses and into the streets. I believe we're ready for that. There is a great marriage that's about to take place between the prophetic and evangelism. I believe that we're about to watch an explosion of miracles as those two uh, giftings of God come together. That God's going to reveal the hearts and the secrets of men's hearts. But he's also about to, uh, about to give clear directions. I know in the beginning of the year... Everybody talks about New Year's resolutions and all the things we're going to do and purpose to do. But I purposely heard the Lord say to me this morning that 2021 is not a year of resolutions, but it is a year of solutions. And many of you watching this today, many of you that are right there uh, this morning, God is about to drop revelatory solutions in your heart, re uh, solutions for things that are happening Uh, in, in the pandemic, solutions for businesses and economy, solutions for government, solutions for education. God is about to release the anointing of solutions upon the Netherlands. And I felt like the Lord said in the same way that you have been known for, for a, as a nation uh, of engineers, those who were able to, to build dikes and canals and all of those things. The Lord says, and now I'm releasing that same anointing. Uh, uh, for evangelism, are releasing that same anointing for the marketplace. Get ready for miracles in the marketplace. Get ready for what God is doing, even through the medium of technology and how the gospel is going to be spread in this year. You're going to reach more people in 2021 than you've ever been able to reach in all of your lifetime and history as a church 
or a movement. Uh, I'm telling you right now that the hand of the Lord is getting ready to open up the floodgates of heaven. And you're about to watch uh, an amazing move of God. I believe the Lord is taking down the religious spirit. I believe he's tearing down the political spirit that have both tried to control the church, the people of God that have been trying to keep revival suppressed and hidden. But there is an awakening that is, is going to begin to reach through the generations. There is a five generational move of God coming to the Netherlands. It's going to go from the youngest to the oldest and the oldest to the youngest that you're about to watch uh, the hand of the Lord begin to uh, begin to bring us into a season of redemption. I feel really strong, as I said in the beginning, that the Lord is welcoming, welcoming us into the year of healing. And that year of healing is not coming from governments. It's not even coming from scientists. It is coming from the hand of the Lord himself with an encounter of Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. I also believe this. And we're about to watch the Lord show up with great provision for the end time uh, harvest. I believe that this is a season where the Lord is calling us to be ready at any given moment to, to reap and to receive the harvest. I believe right now that you are being positioned by the Spirit of God right there in Hardevike, right there in, in the Netherlands. And you're about to watch the hand of the Lord move like never before. I saw his hand of protection coming around you in this season. And just like the angel would come and say, be, do not be afraid. The Lord is removing fear from every equation. And faith, hope, and love are beginning to rise. Well, hello and good morning to uh, my wonderful uh, Dutch family and uh, to Matthias, to Laura, and to the whole team and family there that I've grown to, to know and to love. And we've just come out, of course, of a somewhat epic uh, 2020. Um, who knows exactly how long we have um, left of some of these uh, major restrictions on our lives and on our ministries. But um, as I think about um, 2021, and as I think about you, um, I, I believe that this is time to be restored to our foundations. Um, every organization, every individual, even nations, have, as it were, a foundation put into them um, at the birth. And I believe that this is a time for us to be restored to our true foundations. Uh, individually, I believe that this will return us to the foundations of our conversion encounter, if I can call it that. The Apostle Paul had an encounter. Um, on the road to Damascus. It was his conversion, or as I like to say, completion testimony. It was unexpected. It was undeserved. It was powerful. It was emotional. It was directional. It was personal. And you and I have our encounters. They might not have been quite so dramatic, but I believe we will be restored to our personal foundations of our faith. And organizations and churches, the same applies. What are, is that core, that central theme, that DNA out of which you were birthed and formed? I believe that we will see ourselves being taken back to that organizationally and as ministries. I, I do believe it's true of, of nations, but I, I'm not going to talk about that right now. But for all of us, I believe that there are foundations and there are four foundations that I believe that we will live out of more than ever before in the coming year. That is what has God said and already done because he's going to repeat it. What has God said he will do because he's going to fulfill it. Who does God say he is? I am the way, the truth and the life. And who does God say you are? And we will move forwards, I believe, with principles in our hands, the principles of relational order, the principle of truth, the principle of the supernatural power of heaven and the principle of our assignment to bring heaven to earth, to expand the influence of King Jesus wherever we go. I believe 
that 2021 is a year of restoration to our foundations. And I also believe it will be a year where we will find keys. We will be given keys, maybe the original old keys. And the keys that we use to open doors in 2021 will be the keys of authority that we walk in in 2022. I love you all. I can't believe it's been so long since I've been with you. And uh, and I look forward to uh, to being with you again very soon and experiencing um, the wonderful Dutch hospitality um, and uh, and my friends and family out there. So bless you guys and uh, have a great 2021. And I will see you in 2021. Well, hello and happy new year to all of you. I'm standing right now in Arizona, in America, having a wonderful time. And I'm sure you're having a wonderful time as well in Europe or around the world, wherever you're watching from. Guys, I want to encourage you today just with a short, very brief, yet powerful message. And it's the message that we know is found in the book of Corinthians. And Paul actually talked about it. He said the greatest of these three is love. But he specified two other things, faith and hope. And I believe this coming 2021 is a year of absolute unreasonable hope. The reason why I say unreasonable is because my hope can be so small. It can be so much like I hope these little things get better. But God has great expectations for us and God has great expectations for the power of his gospel. Now, look at 2020. We look back and everyone's like, oh, it was such a challenging year and it was so hard. That's kind of true. But at the same time, it wasn't hard in some ways. It actually helped us develop depth of intimacy with God in our secret place, you know, where we couldn't gather in our normal meetings. We gathered around the throne of God in the home. What an amazing gift it is to actually have the secret life back daily with Jesus, not just the Sunday life. That's a huge blessing from God. And I'm thankful to the Lord for that, where we couldn't preach the gospel in maybe bigger settings. All of our team specifically, and many people like you and I, we became one-on-one -on -one evangelists, people who'd come to people and say, hey, Jesus loves you at a restaurant or a cafe. We became creative. And so we've taken some things out of this year that we need to look into this further year with hope with. And it's not just a thing of pain or suffering, but it's a thing of God. You can do all of this and turn it for your glory and for your good. And I want to encourage you with one thing. You remember when Silas and Paul, they're in prison. They're in a place where they couldn't meet with anybody. They're in a place where nothing was working for them. The gospel was being preached and spread, but they were shut down. But Jesus caused them in their spirit to begin to sing. And again, bang, big breakthrough came. An earthquake came, shook the prison. And it says it also shook the chains of the other people sitting in prison with them. They all believed in God. They all saw God because of Paul and Silas's different attitude to the world. So the world is complaining, the world is suffering, the world is in pain, and I'm not denying that pain, but I am saying this, we have a King Jesus, the King of hope, who is greater than all that pain. We've overcome, we're eternal people. So because of that, we can have hope that is unreasonable and we can have joy and bring it to people in a way that they're like, what has happened to you? Why are you so different? It's because of the joy of the Lord. It's because of the goodness of God. So I encourage you this year, give yourself fully to that joy. Give yourself fully to the gospel and trust him that in all things, he's going to provide a way and not just a way, but a glorious way, a way where he's magnified and exalted. I love you guys. I look forward to seeing you later on in the year in the Netherlands and across the world. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody. This is Mel Tari speaking to you from California for your Harvest Tales International Online Meeting. This last year has been difficult for all of us and the church all over the world. Like the disciples, for 40 plus months, they followed Jesus, they heard his preaching, they saw all the miracles and walked with him every day. But then, on one Friday afternoon, the Savior, the Master, was crucified died and buried. That has been a very, very difficult situation for the disciples indeed. And the Bible told us in Luke chapter 24 that they were in a lockdown. They were in a room with the doors locked because they were afraid and they probably didn't understand what was going on. After 40 plus months walking with the living savior, with Jesus, now, he is gone, he is dead, and he is buried. Because of that, they were in a lockdown. They were afraid. They didn't understand what was going on. But Luke chapter 24 told us that all of a sudden, behind the locked doors, Jesus appeared and said to them, Peace be unto you. 
And the following stories in the Bible told us how Jesus revealed himself in the following 40 days to the disciples. Not only he saw them in the locked door, he walked with the other two uh, from Emmaus, uh, Emmaus, and then also he met the disciples and the ladies many times. And there's another incident in the Bible where Jesus showed up when the disciples were fishing all night and had nothing. And he told them to uh, throw the nets to the right side. And they have so much fish, a uh, hundred and plus fish that they got at that time. So Jesus revealed himself during those 40 days in many ways. And Dr. Luke uh, told us in Acts chapter one, verse four, that he saw himself to the disciples with many convincing proof that he is alive. And after that, he met them in Galilee and he told them and commanded them to go unto all the world to preach the gospel because he said to them, all power and authority has been given to him. This story of the disciples are very similar with all that we have gone through in this last year. Many of you have experienced Jesus, you have accepted the Lord, you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, and you have been serving him all these years. All of a sudden, last year, it looks like we all are in a lockdown. But today, on this new year, I want to come to you with a message from the Lord that he is speaking peace to all of us. He is speaking to you and I like he has to the disciples. Be not, do not be afraid because all authority and power has been given to him. And he is coming to you and I today with the command, go unto all the world to preach the gospel. For 40 months, Jesus was limited in his traveling to a small region of Israel. Maybe there are 10, 20 million people alive there that he was able to minister among them. But today, as he released the disciples into uh, their mission to go unto the world, basically what Jesus was doing is that he break down the barrier. No longer the disciples are limited to a small region of Israel, but now they can go all over the world Thomas went all the way to India. The other disciples down to Africa and different part of uh, Asia Minor uh, at that time. So they are not limited anymore to the small region. Not only the 10, 20 million in Israel, but now there are hundreds of million all over the world that they can reach. You see the barrier of limitation has been broken and now the disciples can go everywhere all over the world. And as it was with the disciples, I'm proclaiming to the church and to Harvest Field International right now that as it was with the disciple, he is going to give us many convincing proof that he's alive in this generation. And he's releasing us and breaking down the barriers so that now we can go all over the world, Asia, Africa, Europe, Latin America, and everywhere. And not only to 100 million people like it was in that generation, but to 7 billion people who are alive today. So I'm here today to encourage all of you who are part of the Harvest Field International that no longer we're in a lockdown. We have been released unto a time and a life of effectiveness. No more barriers. The whole world is our field and the field is right. And Jesus said he's releasing his power he will be with us and we are going to see many convincing proof that he's alive so my friend i bless you and release you unto the fullness of your destiny by the power and presence of the holy spirit go because there's an open door there's a field that is right and the power of god is with you and you're going to see in the coming days as you obey him many convincing proof in your ministry you're going to see millions come to the Lord from all backgrounds, from the Muslim world, the Hindus, the Indians, people from the nations will come to know Jesus. We are going to see the release of the power of God unprecedented. So I bless you and release you unto the fullness of your destiny in the name of Jesus. Embrace it and go for it, my friend, because the best is still yet to come for each one of us. Harvest Field International. 
for the glory of God in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know what about you, but I'm I'm serious just it feels like we are on so much elect electricity. And I, I really want to challenge you to share all this gems. The Lord spoke gems today. If you don't know what the Lord wants to say for 2021, you cannot say this anymore. From this day on, it's not possible. The Lord spoke through his servants, through his sons and through his daughters. I was, to be honest, a little bit overwhelmed when I was sitting there and just said to worship leader Hans, I said, honest true, the only video I saw, because I just texted my friends just on a, in the Christmas holiday, I texted them one little message, because they're my close friends. And I said, guys, can you just share a prophetic word for our Harvest Field International meeting on the 3rd of January? He said, yeah, of course. So directly they start to send us video messages. I was overwhelmed. We, we, we had to say stop, because <laughs> there were so much videos getting in. And, uh, and I said to myself, because the first one I got in was from Cindy Jacobs. Cindy said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to send it directly. I saw that video and then I realized, Lord, I don't want to see it anymore until today. So the prophetic word you have given me is to be pure from you. And so I didn't saw the other videos and I was shocked what Ben and all the others said about God is restoring hope, love and faith about repositioning yourself. Guys, brothers and sisters, this is the word from the Lord. It, Everything that is spoken today is for you, for the village, for the city, for the nation God has put you in. And I want to challenge you to share this message, to share all the prophetic words, to share this video. Because you know, this is, this is how we reposition ourselves, is standing on the promises of the Lord. This is what the Lord wants to do. And this is how we run the race. This is, this is how we fight the good fight. In Jesus' name. We're going to pray for the last 10 minutes of this Harvest Field International service for people. For people who are in need, for people who need a miracle, for people who need hope in their lives. And I want to welcome all those people who are part of our Zoom meeting. And uh, thank you so much uh, for, uh, for being with us. Guys, at, at the Zoom, did you enjoy all the prophetic words? Maybe you can do thumbs up. <laughs> it was amazing, wasn't it? Uh, and uh, very quickly, Sakaria, you have been in our meetings the last <laughs> few weeks. And uh, just before Christmas, I remember we were uh, praying for your prayer request about your son, um, who, uh, John, who was, um, yeah, you didn't have contact with him for a very long time. And I got some reports back from our pastor, Rob. And so maybe you can share a testimony to start with in 2021. Are you willing to do that? Many others, 
and I'll tell you, it was a miracle. Our son was standing at the outside Airbnb, and my wife and I connected with him, prayed with him. Almost 35 minutes, my wife was crying to see our son back. And then he's back home now. Uh, someday I will tell you all the story. There's a lot of story behind all of these things. But the miracle, the miracle is that you prophetically <laughs> gave that hope in faith and God honor your prayer and you know it says in the book of chronicles believe in the word believe in the prophets and i just want to say thank you for the bold prayer you prayed past the days and all the people who prayed we celebrate today he has a long way to go of recovery but god can do the recovery so i just want to say thank you and and you know the work in middle east someday we will contact yes but you have a great ministry may the lord bless you i believe this year for your church and many others, it's going to be a year of restoration, healing, deliverance, a great harvest. Wow. Uh, just like a global pandemic last year, this is going to be a global yeah. harvest this year. So That's right. I will, we will be continuing praying for you. Please pray that our son will get reconnected with God and that he will be completely restored. And also, I have a prayer request for my daughter, Joanne. Uh, she's dating someone that we are not too happy about it. Just pray God will speak to her and restore her. So I want to say thank you to the Harvest Fields family, the wife Laura, and everyone who took us to stand to pray. And there are many miracles that have happened through your prayer. And this year is going to be a book of acts for wow. you and your church. Love mm -hmm. you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Thank you so much, Sakuria. I really feel the anointing on, on, on what you're sharing right now. And are you willing to pray for everyone who's watching? Because uh, there's really an anointing on your life. And isn't it amazing, people, if we declare together? I, I do believe, but it's another teaching we're going to do. And that's uh, if God speaks and God gives promises to you, there are three things we can do in act of obedience. That's act of faith. That's a prophetic act. And that's very important, it's degree. It's to degree. And that's what we did with, 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 with our friend here. It's, uh, I said clearly, it's not a prophetic word. But actually what I meant was like, wishful thinking is, what we actually did is we degreed the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord is he wants to bring the children back to the fathers and the mothers. And the mothers and the fathers to the children. So the only thing we did together was in faith, together with all those people who prayed already for this situation, we decreed again, out loud, the word of the Lord. And the Lord loves this stuff. And we take a stand and start to decree. And we decreed that uh, before Christmas or on Christmas, uh, there will be a, a reconnection with your son. And, uh, and, and, and that's what happened. So, so, so I, I really want to challenge everyone who's listening right now to start to degree, to start to speak out the things of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. And sometimes, maybe, maybe not saying this is the Lord saying. I was very careful with, with our friend here. But just degree the word of the Lord. <laughs> that's very important. Amen. And so, so um, are, are you willing to pray for, for the audience? And, and, and maybe you can pray uh, specific for all those parents who are disconnected with their children. Uh, I would love to, and, and, and you just mentioned something about declaration. And this was kind of a verse that God put on my heart, if I may read. It says in Job 22, 27, 28, you will make a prayer to him, he will hear you, you, you and you will pay your vow. You will also declare a thing and it will be established for you. And That's right. light will shine on your way. Job 22, 27, 28. Yes. So I believe in you. I join with you, Pastor Mateus. You have a beautiful church and a great <laughs> family. I would love to play. And you know, there was a promise God said in the book of Isaiah. This day he said, your son will come from afar off. Your daughter will be nursed by your side. And God fulfilled it and I pray there are many parents out there who are going through the similar pain that we are going through that they will be restored this year and they will be tremendous yes. and I pray God will do a mighty thing. Father I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I join with Pastor Mateus, wife Laura, 
That's right. Yes. Or the Bible tells us in the book of Samuel that David recovered it all. Lord, I pray this year that the Harvest family will, will be blessed like never before. This year will be a year of turning point. This year will be a year of deliverance. This year will be a yes. year of restoration. This year will be a year of opening doors, yes. miracles, healing. They would not even be able to keep up with what you're about to do. Father, I just pray that you would bless Pastor Mateus, his wife, Laura, and the entire family, Lord. Yeah. Download the spirit, the double portion of the Holy Spirit. They yes. will bless the ministry. I pray that you will bring new relationship and pastors. I also pray, God, for all the parents that have prodigals, that have loved ones, that have blessed. Yes. And God, give them hope. Hope is Jesus Christ, as Pastor Mateus has been speaking, Lord. Grace is Jesus Christ. Hope is Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray this year, Lord. There will be that we will recover everything. There will be a there will be a reunification and restoration of God. Yeah. Bless them and I pray, God, that Lord, that the wealth and the education and the resource that you have given to all of us, Jesus. that we will unload to the kingdom world. That's right. Lord, not only uh, faith in our mouth, but the seed in our hand will be invested into harvest and many other ministries. That's thank right. you for hearing our prayer. We thank you, Lord, the best days ahead of us, not behind us. Yeah. We bless Pastor Mateus, his wife, Laura, mm. and all the harvest family. 2021 will be the greatest year that they will ever experience. We ask you in the resurrected name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, my brother. And actually, we only met each other through Zoom. Isn't it amazing? This is, God is so good, isn't it? Thank you so much. And I, and I also really feel to release right now for all our Zoom viewers, but also those who are watching. In the last five, six minutes, we have that the, the God of hope, Jesus Christ, the glory who is inside of you is releasing his deliverance and his healing power right now in the name of Jesus. So Lord, everyone watching through YouTube, Facebook, in the Zoom, Jesus, we just say thank you so much for using our mouth. Thank you, Lord, for the weapon of your word. And we proclaim, Lord, that you are the healer. You are the healer. You are the healer. Jesus, you are the healer. In 2021, Lord Jesus, we want to see your body being healed, restored in hope, restored in faith, restored in believing your promise, restored, Lord Jesus, but also in their bodies. So we speak right now to pain. We speak to infirmities. We speak to demonic powers in the name of Jesus. We bind you. Right now, we bind you and we release heaven right now. I ask you, wherever you are watching from, just right now, receive the glory, the hope of glory in His name is Jesus. We cannot do anything magic because about Jesus, there's nothing magic. Jesus is the Son of God and He's carrying an anointing and that anointing is able to set you free from bondage, from fear, from infirmities, from every kind of sickness, from little headaches, from COVID-19, from cancer. Oh, Jesus is the one who is healing you and is able to heal you because He is the one who died for you and rose up again in Jesus' mighty name. We release right now, Lord, your healing power over, over all our Zoom friends in the name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I, I want to release because there's, a, there's presence in, in all your homes, but I really feel to pray for Nino and Tania. T Nino and Tania, I don't know, uh, maybe we can can go to the big screen yeah hello Nania and uh, is it your real name Nino and Tania yes, that's hey welcome thank you so much for being part in this zoom meeting live here from the Netherlands where are you watching from uh, Netherlands. oh great oh that's awesome that's good is it okay I do this in English because of our international uh, audience Fantastic. Is there any specific thing we can pray for? Because there's, I really feel that the Lord is breaking heaviness and He's really restoring joy to you after the very difficult season you went through. I, I, I actually see breakthrough is coming near to you. Uh, can you. Can you share a little bit where we can pray for? Thank you. 
Nico and Tanya, there is a change coming and I, I really feel that right now maybe we all fr fr from, from your homes and wherever you're watching from, this is very vulnerable what I just shared, just publicly. And so maybe you could just can close your eyes, Nico and Tanya. You are the God that healed thee. You are the one who heals their wounds, Lord. Just one touch of your presence will heal them inside. So Holy Spirit, I ask you come, Holy Spirit, sweet Holy Spirit, in you there is no condemnation, in you there is freedom, in you, in you there is no shame, in, in you there is no rejection, in, in you there is this beautiful sound of belonging. Because you are the God who healed thee and set them free. And, and Jesus said so clearly, I, 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 I leave peace to you. And, and, and this is not a worldly peace, it's, it's, it's heavily peace. And Lord, this family needs right now heavily peace. Lord, if they, if they came into this situation, Lord, we, we even want to bless, Lord Jesus, all those people right now, Lord, Lord, who, who are part of the challenge they're in right now. And you want one thing, Lord, and that's bring unity. Your, Lord, your heart is bringing people together. Your heart is open hearts. And I, I do pray, Lord, for this miracle, Lord, of, of unity, of understanding each other's hearts. And, and Lord, we break judgment. We, we break right now, Lord, the fear of not belonging and all the stress it brought. In the name of Jesus, we command your peace into their bodies. Just right now fire of the Holy Spirit in their home, peace in their home, restoration of hope and perspective. And we take captives every lie, everything what came into your mind, the things what is waking you up in the middle of the night. We release every word over your life at Psalm 91. Keep reading it, keep reading it, keep reading Psalm 91, keep reading it, hide in Him. And thank you, Lord, that this is the year of restoration. Also, Lord, because of this swirl wind, Lord, if, if there are so much disconnections with, with other relationships, Lord Jesus, we pray your blood over every person right now, Lord, who are stuck in this situation without any condemnation, without any pointing of fingers. Lord, we, we want to see this family being restored. 
Thank you, Lord, for destiny and hope. There it is, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that this is the year of restoration. In Jesus' mighty name. In spirit, soul, and body, upon you. This situation, the Lord say, will not destroy you, but if you handle it well, if you navigate well through this storm, this situation will be used as the breakthrough for the next level. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We feel that anointing here. And also when you're watching at your home and you're going through um, difficult situations, special, special, special church splits, it, it can cause so much pain. It can cause so much pain. We are in ministry just for 25 years, very, very, still very young. But the biggest pain we saw in the body of Christ is normally church splits. Because the brothers and sisters, if brothers and sisters cannot hear each other anymore, then it's so painful. It's so painful. But, but the Lord, I ask you to hide in the Lord. Let the Lord fight for you. Let the, let, let the Lord handle it for you. Sometimes we have to fight, but in most crises, I've, I had to learn just to be with Him, just to hide in Him, and to get my confirmation from the Lord. And if you handle this well, everyone who's going through a difficult situation with people, just go to the Lord, go to Him, go to Daddy God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I, I see the sign of having one more and then thank you. Or I think because I have my glasses not on, Tamara. So I think you said 10 more, I don't know. No, <laughs> I got a sign here, so. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus for. Is there anyone here? One more, I can really pray for you. You, you really need a miracle right now. Maybe you can raise up your hand at the Zoom meeting before we close. Is there anyone who say, I really need prayer? No one? That's great. Uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, can you, can you quickly, Jeffrey, can you do it in English? Because I know you very well in Dutch. <laughs> Jeffrey, is there anything we, we can pray for right now? Can you, can you put your, yourself on, uh, on mute? Okay, there you go. You are, you're, hi, Jeffrey, where, where can we pray for? Yes. Your wife lives in Uganda, right? Yes, she lives in Uganda. She has a nice, uh, uh, yeah, we can see each other soon. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you are part of this house, Jeffrey. You know, there is an anointing on this house when it comes to breakthrough at nations and visums and tickets where people say it's not possible. You know, even uh, when we flew with 138 people to North Korea, there was no airline willing to bring us. So the North Korean government sent two planes to China to pick us up. That's, that's a miracle. <laughs> so, so the Lord really is able to do this. So Lord, let, let, let's all really believe for Jeffrey. Jeffrey went through a very hard season and I know his story and he just needs really a miracle he really wants to see his his wife who is uh, stuck right now for 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 uh, a long time in uganda so lord we thank you so much for jeffrey and you are the god you are the god of miracles and we thank you lord that for you nothing is impossible and lord we thank you so much that there was like a zoom confirmation somewhere but lord we thank you so much lord that that if we degree your word that nothing is impossible with you lord jesus that we can degree together lord jesus that we believe lord that 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 it's it's possible lord for her to, to get a visa or for Jeffrey to go to Uganda. But we, we pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, for a, a reconnection, a reunion, Lord, uh, with his wife. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray for your favor. We pray for your will. In Jesus' name, we pray for visas, tickets, open doors. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, Jeffrey. We love you. 
And uh, thanks again, uh, everyone, for being part of the Zoom next time. We're going more deeper also in, uh, into healing ministry and deliverance. And uh, again, if you want to be part next week of this, uh, uh, you know to find us. There will be again a link of, of our Zoom. And uh, we really want to pray and minister to you. Thank you so much for being part of this uh, really special day. Wasn't it special today, guys? It was just fantastic. And uh, thank you so much, Lord, for all the words you have given us. Thank you, Lord. This is meat. Lord, this is gems. And Lord, we want to honor your word. We acknowledge, Lord, that you spoke so clearly through all your different prophets and apostles. Lord, we want to take your words and we want to stand on it. And thank you, Lord, you bring everything into fulfillment. I bless all those people who are watching and who are going to rewatch this. I bless every person, every head. Remember, you are the landing strip of the Holy Spirit. Remember that God placed you in the situation to bring hope. And we bless you for this week. Whatever is going on in the world, political, economically, or in your family, in your circumstances, Jesus, the hope of glory, is living inside of you. Nothing, nothing will run out of his hands. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We love you. And we cannot wait to be with you next week. Bye.